This video is how to set up and use the MetaMask mobile wallet. If you have got the app downloaded, we can get started creating a wallet. Now, if you've got the app already on your desktop, you can very easily recover that exact same wallet on your phone. I'll show you how to do that in a second. For now, we're gonna press get started and then create a new wallet. So how to go ahead and do that. Firstly, click create new wallet. It's then gonna ask you to agree to some terms and conditions. You can either agree to that or not. You can actually press no thanks and then you don't send that data to them. And then from here, it's gonna ask you to set up a password on your phone. This is app specific. So when you spend coins from the wallet, um, it's gonna put your password in. Now you can choose any password that you want and you can also link up your face ID or your other biometrics as well. You can see that right here, unlock with face ID. So you don't actually have to put the password in if you set it up with your face ID. If you delete the app and then reload it, this password disappears. And this is not anything to do with your recovery phrase or anything like that. So choose a password as you want, press create password uh, and then press okay if you want face ID. Now from here, it's going to ask you to set up and secure the wallet. And this is now your seed phrase. So if you are setting up a new wallet, you get a seed phrase or a recovery phrase of 12 words. This is how you recover the wallet on a different device. So if your phone breaks or if you delete the app, you can very easily recover your same wallet with all your crypto with those 12 words. You can do it on another phone or a desktop or anywhere else. So these 12 words, it's known as a recovery phrase. This is your wallet. So if you have them, no problem, you can recover the wallet anywhere else. If someone else has them or knows what they are, they also can recover your wallet on their device, meaning they basically have all of your crypto. So write this down, keep it somewhere extremely uh, safe. Don't let anyone see it. And of course, don't lose it or damage it in any way. You'll see the 12 words right here. This is it. You have to write them down and then it's going to check that you have them in the right order by asking you what you know five, seven, and eight are, and then you can write that in and check. Once you've done that and checked, the wallet is created for you. And here it is, the account one, and you have your wallet address. If you already have a MetaMask wallet set up on your desktop, then you can recover that same wallet on this device too, either with your recovery phrase, with the 12 words, or just by scanning the QR code from your computer. So go to import using secret recovery phrase, you can agree to this or not. And then it says, where is your phrase? So you can click that and actually put it in. That's the 12 words. Or you just press the QR code scanner right here on the right hand side and then go to your desktop. From here, I can go to settings in the top right. If you have the desktop extension, just expand it into this view. Go to settings and then go down to security and privacy and then reveal secret recovery phrase right here. Then you have to go through some questions. Of course, it says, um, if you lose a phrase, MetaMask can't help you. So can't help you here, continue. And then you're being scammed if someone asks for it. So press that and continue. And then it's gonna uh, ask for the password that you have set up with your desktop app here, input that, and then it's gonna reveal the QR code for you. That's your recovery phrase, that's your wallet. So go back to the application, scan that, and it's gonna import your wallet into the mobile app. From here, we can add in any networks that we might wanna use within MetaMask. MetaMask is an Ethereum wallet or an EVM wallet, meaning that any networks that run on EVM can be used in this wallet. So Ethereum, but then all of the layer twos like Optimism, Arbitrum, Base, uh, BNB Smart Chain, Avalanche. So anything that can have an EVM address, you can use in here and they will have exactly the same address, but they are different networks. So up at the top, you can see Ethereum main network we're on right now and account one and then my address. This address is the same across all the different networks. So if I click Ethereum main network up at the top and then it says add network and you should be able to see the popular networks right here. So you can add all of these in if you want to use them and you can go between the accounts. So let's add in Arbitrum one, press confirm. This is the details of that network that are given to you. So you can just add this in and then you can switch to network if you want, but we'll press close and then we'll add in base right here as well and choose that network. And then we're gonna to switch to this network right here. Up at the top, you can see we're now on the base network. So the exact same address, but we're on the base network now because all of the different networks have different balances and different tokens. So you can switch between them here. You can now see the networks that I've got added or go over to Arbitrum one and exactly the same address, but now we're on the Arbitrum network and a different balance with different tokens in this network account. 
If you have tokens across multiple networks or accounts, you can see them all in one place using MetaMask portfolio. This is great on desktop as it's bigger, but you can use it on the smartphone as well. So press portfolio by the wallet balance here. It takes you through to the browser tab and then I'll just press connect MetaMask and this account I'm just going to connect. What this lets me do is see all of my token balances across all of the different networks that are possible to link to MetaMask. So for right now, you can see my total portfolio value. That's the value of all my crypto across all of the different EVM networks that I'm using. And then if you press all accounts here, you can actually add in accounts that you have. So I've just got this one account linked here, but if you press to the right hand side, right, you can manage account settings. And then from here, we can add in different accounts. So add account, as you can see on the right hand side, if you have those secondary accounts, you can just add that in. So we'll go back to the homepage right here. So the three dots here, just overview. And that lets you see all of your token balances, NFT, DeFi transactions, etc., all here. And then you can see which network that they're on and which wallet address they're linked to. Now we'll deposit some crypto into our main wallet. So back on the main page, bottom left is the wallet icon. This is our account one, our main wallet. And I'm going to get some ETH into my wallet on the Arbitrum network. So I press Arbitrum one up the top. I don't want to use the Ethereum network. It's gonna be more expensive than Arbitrum. Arbitrum has all the apps that I would want to use. And it's a layer two directly on Ethereum. So I've got no issues using Arbitrum one. You can also use base or any of the other layer twos as you want. I'll just use Arbitrum one. Like I said, the address is the same across all the different networks. And I have my wallet address right here. So I'm going to copy that. And then I'm gonna go over to my centralized exchange and I'm gonna buy some ETH. If you're using Ethereum, or any of the layer twos like Arbitrum, Optimism, and Base, all of those networks use ETH to pay for gas. Gas is the network fee that we pay when we use the network. So if you wanna swap cryptos or do anything, you have to pay some gas with the transaction, that's gonna be paid in ETH. So we need to buy some ETH and get some into our wallet right here. So I'm gonna copy my address and then go over to my Binance account. And then from here, I've got some ETH that I've bought on my Binance, I'm gonna withdraw that, withdraw via crypto network. And then from here, I'm gonna paste in my wallet address. From here, I'm gonna choose the network that I want to withdraw it on. Now I want the ETH on the Arbitrum network. You saw me choose that in MetaMask. So I need to make sure that I'm withdrawing from Binance, telling them that they should send the ETH to me on the Arbitrum network. I've got an Arbitrum address. You can see that in my MetaMask. And I have to make sure that Binance also can send it over the Arbitrum network. And you can see the third one down is Arbitrum One. That's the Arbitrum network. They also support Base and Optimism and many others. But I'm gonna use the Arbitrum network. That's gonna cost me 10 cents worth of ETH to send that. So Arbitrum One, and then choose an amount that you wanna send out, something like that. And then just press withdraw from your centralized exchange. That is gonna to go to your wallet address that you've seen in MetaMask and on whichever network that you choose. Send and receive on the exact same network and you shouldn't have any issues. If you want some deposit bonuses to Binance, Bybit and OKX, the exchanges I use, I'll leave them in the description below. If you wanna know how to sign up for those uh, exchanges as well and use them and actually buy crypto, uh, video guides down in the description. Whilst we're waiting for the centralized exchange to send that ETH out to our wallet, you can also buy crypto directly in MetaMask as well but this is gonna depend on which country that you live in and which payment methods are accepted. If you go to the middle, these arrow icons right here, you can see buy crypto with cash and sell crypto for cash. What MetaMask does here, because MetaMask is a blockchain wallet and it's on the blockchain and it can't send money from a bank account to the blockchain. It's actually using third parties, kind of like centralized exchanges. So they're actually using partners who would uh, you know, buy the crypto for you. So if we press buy crypto here, it's gonna ask you what region that you're in. So I'll choose uh, any region just as an example, and then um, choose, let's say this state right here and press continue. In this region, it's gonna give me the payment methods that I can use. So you can use Apple Pay or a credit card through that. Now, what's actually happening is that you're using that payment method through some other centralized exchange. So we, if we press continue, we'll see that the payment method here is Apple Pay, and then we can choose an amount. So I wanna buy some ETH, because I need some of that for gas. And as you can see up here, it's on Arbitrum One up at the top. It's important because that's the network that it's gonna to go to. So if you want to use a different network, go back 
into your settings, make sure you're on the network that you want that crypto sent to at the current time that you want to buy it on, and then go through this same, same process. From here, we can choose an amount. So let's just do $100, and then we'll get quotes. From here, as you can see, what MetaMask is doing is getting quotes from centralized exchanges. Now, those quotes, as you can see here, from Banksa and Transact, right? So they're not MetaMask, they're a centralized exchange. You would have to go through to these sites, sign up for an account, do KYC, which is know your customer, which is sign up for an account with your ID. And once you've got an account there, you would have to go through the purchase on there and pay the money through the Apple Pay or card. And then they'll send that crypto over to your account. Now, this is expensive too, because you're going to be using a card. The fees are around 1% to 3%, something like that. And these are fine for small amounts. But if you're into crypto, I would highly recommend a a real centralized exchange, Coinbase, Binance, OKX, Bybit, kind of the top four. They charge 10 basis points or less for trading fees. They have a much better um, system and choice. So I would recommend having a real crypto exchange and sending the crypto to your wallet like you saw me just do from Binance. But this is an option if you're just playing around with smaller amounts. We can use the browser tab within MetaMask to directly connect to any app that we want. So bottom right center, I'll click this icon. And then I'm in one inch right here. If you just go to the home tab, you can search for the DAP or you can type in the URL directly. I would highly recommend putting in the URL directly and adding it to favorites because there might be many scam apps out there. So I'll just go back and we're in the one inch app here and I need to connect my wallet. So I'll just press connect wallet here, MetaMask and it's connected. So up in the top, you can see I'm on the Arbitrum network. You can choose any network that you want to use and connect with the DAP. And then from here, it's reading my wallet balance, as you can see. So I've got some ETH in here. So I want to swap to another token, let's say USDC. And I can search for an amount right here. So if you want to use the DAP, what you'll have to do is use it. So press swap. You may have to go through with some um, approvals. So if we press swap, see down here, wrap ETH to uh, wrapped ETH. So again, this is something that this app is needing to do in order to carry out what I want to do, which is swap ETH to a different token. That's absolutely fine. What you can do with the MetaMask wallet is sign transactions and approve transactions. So every app is going to be different. It's going to ask you to do something that it needs to do, but you can go through. So I'll just show you this as an example. Wrap ETH to wrapped ETH. Confirm. Right. So when you want to confirm something, you see the details, you pay a transaction fee. So as you can see that here, what the app is wanting to do with my stuff, it's going to tell me exactly what it wants to do. So it's going to take this balance from the account. It's going to send it to this address, which is a smart contract. You can see the details down here, what it thinks is going to happen. And if you're OK with that, you can just press confirm in the wallet. And that will sign the transaction on the blockchain and carry out the instruction that you want it to do. So if you don't want to just press reject. Transaction rejected. Nothing has come out of your wallet. Nothing has happened. Right, so you can go back to the application. Every wallet uh, is going to react in the same way. Applications may want to do something. You have to approve the application to do that thing um, before it actually has the permission to do that. That's how you use an app, but you can use the browser and connect to any blockchain application through that. If you want to cash out of your crypto, then you have to send it back into a centralized exchange that's going to swap that into money to send either to your card or your bank account. So the middle option right here again, if you press sell, that takes you back through to the third parties that we saw for buying. So again, a little bit expensive. What we'll do is send the crypto out to our centralized exchange, and then we can sell that for our fiat currency. So I'm going to press send. Then it's going to ask me where from. So I'm sending from the Arbitrum network that I'm using, my account one balance, and I have to go to somewhere else. So I'm going to go over to my centralized exchange, and I'm going to deposit ETH. So deposit. And which network do I want to de deposit from? Well, I'm using Arbitrum one on MetaMask. That's where I'm sending my ETH from. So I have to receive it on that same network. So Arbitrum one here, and this is my deposit address. So I'll press copy here. Then I go back to my MetaMask account and I paste in that address. So I know that I'm sending ETH on Arbitrum and Binance is receiving ETH on Arbitrum. If you're sending assets into an exchange, you just have to make sure that they accept the asset that you're sending and on the network that you're sending it on. If your centralized exchange doesn't accept the, the asset that you're using, you'll have to first use a decentralized exchange to swap it into a larger supported asset like ETH or the major stable coins, and then you can send it in. 
Uh, however, most people will always, if they are clearing their wallet, go back into ETH because you have to pay for some gas for this transaction. So it's easier just to wrap it all into ETH and then send it all into a centralized exchange to cash out and then your wallet balance will have nothing left. So we're from our account to our centralized exchange account. We'll press next. Then I can choose the asset that I'm sending. So I'll click ETH here and I've only got a balance of this. So that's fine for me on the Arbitrum One network. So what we'll do is put an amount in that we're sending like this and then we're going to press next. So this is a blockchain transaction, meaning that I am going to have to pay a little bit of gas in order to send this coin. So it's going to show me that gas. The estimated gas is very, very low, as you can see, but the total amount that I'm sending, and then I'm going to press send, and then I have to check that and then sign the transaction. Transaction submitted, waiting for confirmation. That should go through. So I've actually sent those assets back into the centralized exchange account. I'll leave some more in-depth guides down in the description below alongside the deposit bonuses to the exchanges I use as well. I'm James, it's Money ZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.